which is so much a part of our life with so many friends in it, but in a nutshell, how would you explain what reach is? I think reach is all about self-belief because I, I've seen reach from the beginning to what it is now 20, 20 years on. And it's always to me been about encouraging people to mm. just be who they are and allow, give them an environment where it's safe to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it's really simple what reach does because we don't have those safe environments no. in life. And it just gives you that, you know, you go to school and it's like everyone sort of puts you down or you're not good enough. And then you always feel like you're living up to this expectation. And when you're in reach, it's like anything's possible and you actually yeah. can do it. Yeah. And everyone's going to stand around you and help you and nurture you to get to that point. It's pretty Yeah. Incredible. I think a lot of people think it's for really underprivileged kids. No, it's for it's everyone. Like, totally. Well, Jules Lund went yeah. and I partner went and I look at all of you guys who you, our core group of friend are friends of reach kids yeah you know and it's the openness in our relationships is pretty incredible oh definitely like the way, even the way the boys interact is not like many friendship groups no and because we've all communicated all our fears yeah. but also we've communicated all the amazing things as well totally. and we've shared it with each other so I think that's why our friendships are really different yeah yeah and I think why it always worked was it was about Jim and Paul were really young when they started Reach, so it never felt like they were our parents or our teachers. Yeah, they were kind of cool. Too. Yeah, so they were sort of cool, but now I look back and I don't think they weren't that cool. But yeah. they <laughs> thought they were cool, and then then we took over as the next generation, and now like it's run by young people who are 20, 21, 22, yeah. and I think that's why it really works. It's because you you don't want to be told what to do. You, you experiencing something with a facilitator, a crew member who's going through the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. 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 It's pretty unique. Yeah. Jim Steins has been a huge impact on your life. Yeah. He came into your life when you were very young. Yeah. Like 13. Yeah. Um, and was like a mentor, best friend, father figure, everything. Yes. Yeah. What did your relationship with Jim mean to you? Uh, well, Jim was a closest person to me my whole life so he he was everything he was like the person that I wanted more than anything for him to be proud of me he was the person that I wanted to have a drink with he was the person I wanted to share secrets with like you know um, and his family a very important part of my life and um, I think it's because he played that role that your parents can't necessarily play like because he's able to play it in a different way. Mm. So you have this bond that is just something that I treasured more, more than anything. Um, and he certainly sacrificed a lot for me during the tsunami time. And um, he put a lot of his personal needs on, you know, out of his mind to help me in that time. Mm. And that really pushed our relationship into another sphere because I saw the sacrifices he made for me um, mm. in that time. Yeah. I guess when he became sick is when you almost got to repay that. Yeah, I did. Because you yeah. were there, the whole yeah. process of that. You very yeah. close to Sam, yeah. science, his wife. Yeah. When Jim passed, did it bring up other, did it bring up things about Troy again? Are you like, why is every man in my life, like, what's going on here? Yeah. I think more when Jim was diagnosed. When he was diagnosed and he said to me, I don't have long, but then he obviously ended up living another two and a half years. My first reaction is I went into, this cannot actually be happening, there are two men I've ever been closest to, one's dead and one's about to die, am I the death fairy, like what am I doing wrong, what is someone trying to tell me, and I just actually didn't think I would ever, if Jim died, I was like I'm never going to get through this, mm. and to be honest I think a lot of people thought that as well. And I think a lot of people were scared because they didn't think I would get through Jim passing. Yeah. Um, but then the biggest gift that Jim gave me was that I did spend those last six months intensively with him and we had so many conversations and I feel like I was one of the most privileged people in that. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to talk to him about the fears of what it was going to mean for me and even close to his deathbed. He's t making sure that I was going to be fine past his death. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I learned more about myself in that process and also about life. You know, it just reminded me again 
that, and I think I was starting to get a bit caught up in what I thought life had to be. Did I have to have a really nice car? Did I have to have all these investment properties? What, I was trying to keep up with everyone else. Yeah. And then Jim got sick and then I just realized, why well, don't I just do stuff I love, you know? Yeah. And because I just need to be happy because that's what Jim taught me in that time. And I think Jim, Jim really was similar to me. It's like, we, we're such high achievers and we want everything now. We want to do everything and change the world and do all that. But Jim missed out on a lot of things because he did that. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And I watch a lot of my really close friends doing the same thing. And yeah. I hope that we can learn something from Jim's death and going, what's it all for? Like, yeah, I, I'm still achieving and wanting to yeah. be really successful, but it's not going to be at the absolute cost of my relationships or mm. my health or anything like that. And I reckon that is the, the biggest thing that we... And I know a lot of our friends still go, yeah. he died for you to learn from him now. Yeah. Like, let's bloody do this. You know, yeah, like, yeah. let's not worry about sending that bloody tweet or doing this let's be really present with yeah. each other which yeah. is really still really hard to do but you you saw of the process that Jim did that he became really present to his kids and his family which yeah. he wasn't before that no know? he wasn't and even the things like not being on your phone when you're around your partner or yeah. your, you know your family and things like that because there's so many distractions so many but in the end Jim realized how important it was to be just in the moment because when you're faced with death, you know that, like... Yeah, who gives a shit about sending yeah, that text? Yeah, <laughs> Who cares how many followers you've got? But, yeah. 